We're going to talk about variability, fetal heart rate variability in the context of why it's important, especially when a baby has suffered a traumatic brain injury like HIE. First of all, variability. I mentioned this term, what is variability? In its basic sense, variability is fluctuations in the fetal heart rate baseline. And you can have four different types of variability. Now for this video today, we're not gonna get too deep into all the technical aspects of variability. We, I'm just gonna go over the four basic types. First of all, you could have absent variability. You could have where there's no variability at all. You could have two, minimal variability. You could have moderate, which is number three, or you could have marked variability which is number four all of these types of readings variability and things of that nature they will be found on a device called the electronic fetal heart monitor and this is going to be a device that is tracking during labor and delivery especially if you're in a hospital they probably hook you up to a machine and it's looking at not only mom's um, you know contraction patterns is looking at the, the baby how the baby's doing the baby's heart rate and all of those types of things this is where variability is going to be tracked. And when a family contacts us because their baby has suffered an HIE injury and they have questions as to, okay, what caused this? Was this something genetic that caused it? Was it something developmental that caused it? Or was this something that happened because of the negligence of the doctors, the nurses, and the hospitals? One of the first areas that we want to look at are the electronic fetal heart strips. We've got to take a look at these strips because in, this, in the strips, like I said, we can find things like variability. And in the classic cases that we have in which a baby has suffered a traumatic brain injury and birth trauma or the negligence of the hospitals, the doctors, nurses, hospital, that they are at fault, what we normally see is that when things start off at the beginning of, of labor, pretty much everything's looking pretty good. There are not too many problems on everything. Variability is good. But as time goes on, as the labor progresses, you begin to see problems with variability. You can see it move from a good spot into maybe a minimal variability. And in, in some instances, it'll even go to absent variability. And variability is a is, can be an indication um, as to how well the baby is going during labor and delivery, how they're moving through the process. And the big issue when we're reviewing is if, for example, you have a situation where variability is seriously problematic and it's beginning to deteriorate and you're moving into a bad place, what was the doctors, the nurses, the hospital, what were they doing in response to the readings that they were seeing on the electronic fetal heart monitor? Did they even notice that variability was problematic or, the, or that you were moving into a minimal variability state? And what was their action plan? What were they looking to do as a result of what they were seeing? This is important because if variability continues to deteriorate and the strip continues to get into a bad place, in some instances, especially if a baby is going on too long and they're not tolerating that vaginal delivery well, they can suffer a traumatic brain injury like HIE because you begin to have blood and oxygen problems. When you have a deprivation or a problem with oxygenated blood getting to a baby, then it stands to reason that in some instances they can suffer a traumatic brain injury like HIE. So I know I talked about a lot in this video, but I'm helping you understand things like variability, the, you know, the fluctuations in the fetal heart rate baseline. These are important things that we as birth injury and birth trauma attorneys are looking at from a medical legal standpoint when we are trying to find answers for families as to what caused their baby's traumatic brain injury at birth. If you have more questions, maybe you're watching this video today because your baby has suffered an HIE injury and you, you have these questions. You want to know what caused it. Was it birth trauma? Was it genetics? Was it developmental? If you have that going on and you want to talk with someone, get your phone and call me. There's a telephone number down below. Go ahead and get your cell and give us a call. Remember, it costs you nothing to at least talk with us about your baby's story. Uh, when you call my office and you talk to my secretary, be sure that you leave them a good email address, a good email address, and also pick a good date and a time so you can get on our calendar and we can give you a call back and talk with you about what's going on. Before I get out of here, finally, I practice law here in the state of Maryland. And I know from time to time, we'll have individuals that will contact us there in the United States 
but they're not in Maryland. And if that's you uh, and you contact us, just understand you're not in Maryland. Just understand that we have to use what we call co-counsel or local counsel. In other words, an attorney in your state. And that's something we can look to, you know, to help you with. But I just want to make sure that you understand that co-counsel, that local counsel aspect of things, if you are not here in the state of Maryland. All right, that's going to be it for tonight's quick educational video or this evening's quick educational video. Again, I'm Marcus Boston and I'm one of the childbirth injury and medical malpractice attorneys practicing law here in the state of Maryland at Boston Law Group, LLC. We'll talk with you next time. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.